Ladies and gentlemen, Roster Watch Nation, welcome back to the Epic Roster Watch Podcast, brought to you by RosterWatch.com. I'm Alex Dunlap here with Cody Carpentier as we are on the eve of the eve of legal tampering. Cody, how are you doing, brother? Doing fantastic, man. It's Friday, and uh, I know you're having a good Friday. We had a, we had a show this morning already on a different channel, so I think we're we're, we're pretty uh, we're cruising at this point, ready to talk free agency, ready to talk best ball, dynasty, the whole nine yards. It's, it's yeah, March. Man. Time. Spring spring has spring has sprung, man. So yeah, pumped to be here for it. Uh let's get right into it. Uh actually before we get right into it, man. If you're watching this on YouTube, please remember to like the show, subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a ton. If you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, a uh, five-star rating and review would go a long way, and we would certainly appreciate that. With it being said, just a ton, you know, just a a ton of fallout here. I don't really know where to start. I guess maybe with the Kirk Cousins stuff. Um and not, you know, not so much as it pertains to Kirk Cousins, but as it would pertain to associated pieces. And the stuff we're hearing the most right now is the Falcons. Um, there was the report that came out from Pelissero yesterday when he was on Rich Eisen's show saying that he's going to he's taking his time right now to kind of go through his suitors. And he's certainly listening to people outside of Minnesota. It feels like Minnesota is still you know, going to be in on it. But there's a little bit more interest for Kirk Cousins, you know outside than we had thought and it's felt like the stuff with the you know the Justin Fields and we've seen that with the odds right the Justin Fields stuff it's been like the the, the trend lines have been different for these two players right a lot more teams it feels like are in on Kirk Cousins than uh would be in on field specifically Atlanta Falcons so for me it brings up a couple things one what what do we make of Justin Jefferson in best ball and in dynasty and stuff vis-a-vis Jamar Chase um, if if in a Kirk Cousinsless offense, right? And secondly, what do we do now in just trying to anticipate this and being ahead of the market and say, let's just say it is Kirk Cousins to Atlanta. Then you look at where Drake London is being taken right now as wide and best ball right now. We're looking at wide receiver – um, let's see, L- London. I have to keep going down a little bit. So, wide receiver twenty eight. Yeah. Does it feel like it's kind of price? It, it feels like to me that with London, it's kind of priced in that he's going to have a better quarterback, right? It's, it feels like it's priced in. I don't know if it's priced in to having a quarterback like Kirk Cousins, especially given the you know given the void of talent around him among the wide receivers. Of course, we know that Kyle Pitts is still there. Kyle Pitts, uh, to me, feels like he's a good value in dynasty. He's somebody, as you know, who uh, I did make a, a, a trade for in one of my kind of older dynasty leagues that I care a lot about. Um, I think that that's kind of interesting and just all, all the associated pieces there around what would be Kirk cousins in Atlanta. I know it sounds really weird, but it is a new, you know, it's a new Zach Robinson offense. Um, it's going to be an offense where he's studied under McVay. We know that it's, that's a kind of deal where, We've seen what Stafford has been able to do with Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, all the rest of these guys, right? I'm, I'm, I hate to say it, man, but I'm back interested in guys like Drake London. I'm back interested. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm, I'm back interested in Kyle Pitts. Um, what do you think about that? And then we can maybe circle back around to what you. I mean, I know you're a close observer of the Vikings. I've, I have another Vikings thing I want to talk about, but just w- yeah. what does that mean for just? Does, does, does Justin Jefferson not feel as safe as Jamar Chase right now? I so I, I have two trains of thought with this Viking thing. First off, with Jefferson, and that is if they do let if Cousins is back, one two doesn't matter, right? But if Cousins departs, what's the move? I don't think it's Baker. I don't think it's Russ. I think it's it's Drake May. I think that's like the the angle they're going to take is they're going to try and get Drake or McCarthy in the strap. They're going to try and move up and get one of these guys, which. St- would definitely feel like a May, kid, again. We talked about this. At the, what what is the the, connection? Ki- the the connection is McCown was hired as the quarterback coach yeah, for yeah. the Vikings, and he was the high school head coach for uh, I think it was head coach, maybe an offensive coordinator, some shit, but uh, head coach for uh, Drake May in high school. So there's a little bit of a connection there, but um, you know, sneak peek. My mock draft five point oh five rounds is going to be out next week at the end of next week, and Drake May is going to be my pick at pick two, and it's going to be a trade up with the Vikings. That's just what it's going to be. Um, that's 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 mock 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 uh for for forecasting i don't know what the word is but anyway um 
Justin Jefferson, I do think the question mark is is there, even if it is a rookie, where rook, these rookies will lean on their, their best talents. But the problem is Hawkinson's a very dependable target there. If he does get back healthy, Addison, Jefferson, there's, there's more than just one mouth to feed there. So I do think that comes down a little bit if it is a rookie or if it's Baker or if it is Russ. No matter what, it's. It, I don't think it can be as perfect as it was with Kirk. I will say that. And the inverse, you bring up Drake London. I think you said wide receiver twenty eight. Yeah, twenty. I'm seeing twenty four. Twenty four on 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 underdog right now. Well, and his well, ADP is right. thirty six. On our, on our current bet, on our current best ball cheat sheet right now, he's at twenty eight. So does he need to come up? I mean, so his, so that's what I'm saying. So he's listed twenty four on underdog right now, and he's right behind neighbors. Which doesn't have a landing spot, but we love Waddle in Miami, DK Metcalf in Seattle, Mike Evans in Tampa, Michael Pittman in Indian- Indianapolis, Tank Dell, Chris Olave, Stephon Diggs. I think you can make an argument like Rashi Rice is at fourteen, Adams is at thirteen. The quarterback that Adams has, the re- the situation Rice is in, where he could potentially add a a receiver in round one. Ayuk is at twelve. I love Ayuk, but uh, DJ Moore is at ten. Things like this, like you can rationalize and and rationally believe. That if Drake London does get a quarterback like Kirk Cousins with competency throwing the football 555, 60, 600 times, that London's going to get 150, 160, 170 targets. He's going to be the the main beneficiary, and they're going to they have a running game, and he's got pits on the inside there, and there's no real threat at number two currently, right? They could bring in a McConkey or they could bring in a Roman Wilson, something like this. That'd probably be smart, but. London's the clear cut, right? He's got the top 10 draft capital. Fontenot wants him to succeed. This team wants him to succeed. If if Kirk Cousins does go to Atlanta, there's no reason not to believe that Drake London could give you a, a, a top 12 finish in 2024. I, I fully believe that that is capable. So do you, do, in, in a vacuum, without knowing Roma Dunze's landing spot, do you like Drake London better than Roma Dunze? In 2024? Yes. Yes. Do you like if, him better? If that's with Kirk Cousins. Do you like him better than Cooper Cup and Keenan Allen? Right without, now, yeah. Without yeah. knowing, without knowing yeah. though, right? We're just kind of so let's let's just bake in a fifty percent chance of, of cousins. And this is the benefit of of having of of having um, these thoughts right now is that you're you're trying to you have to forecast this. this is now you have to that's how you have to draft these these best ball teams right now. I, I believe we, we've talked about this with the rookies all the time, but. If you see a value and you think that there's opportunity for this this role to grow, which with Kirk Cousins, this role is going to grow for Drake London, 100%. I'm, I'm taking him over both those guys. Okay, but what if it's only a 50% chance? It's 50%. It's not It's not 20%. What, what's the other options? What's it, The other options are what? Baker's not going to go there. Russ doesn't feel like he's going to go there. He's, he's visiting with the Giants and Steelers. It's a rookie, right? It's a rookie. It feels yeah, like there's, there's two market. teams. I don't. I don't know what the. It feels like the only team that's been leaked and stuff is the, is is everything with with Fontenot. He just leaks this Correct. stuff. So I don't. <laughs> it, but, but he. But he definitely does right. And so, um, yeah. I. I don't know, man. I trust Tom Pelissero's reporting, and whenever he says that he's kind of that there are multiple suitors. I know that one has to be Atlanta. I'm not sure who the other one could be. It could be, dude. It could be some sneaky. It could be like you know. I have, there's, it could there's be New one England source like Pittsburgh or something. You know what I'm saying? It could be something that we just totally don't expect. There's one source in Minnesota that I have that I believe very closely because he's he has close connections with a lot of the players on the team. And when he says Kirk's not going anywhere, I believe him. If he says Kirk's leaving, I believe him. And a couple days ago, he said Kirk's not going to be back in purple. And so that's you know, that's enough for me to believe he's probably going to go to Atlanta or where. We've talked about Washington before. He's probably not going to go back to Washington, right? That's not a really no, a situation. I mean, but that's that, yeah, that has, but that did come up. That did come up in India a little. You I don't think it would be a bad idea. I don't think it'd be a bad yeah. idea. But if it's not Washington, is he going to New England? Does that seem like that would make sense? Well, I'm just no. I'm not saying it makes sense, but I'm saying unless like we can but at least process of elimination at this point. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, but we can at least give a. I think that. I think we can at least give some kind of some kind of betting odds to just the field without saying yeah. it. You know, it it could be something weird. It could be. Something I put weird. I, I'd put seventy percent on Atlanta, and which put to answer your question anyway, fifty percent Atlanta for Drake London. I would take that odd and and draft Drake London ahead of those guys over Keenan Allen and Cooper Cup and Rome and Rome. What about Devontae Smith? 
that starts to get hairy, dude. I, I think they I think they bring another weapon into Philadelphia, and I think that that offense is a little bit of figuring out to, to do. And they also have a running back situation that they need to comb through and figure out what kind of running attack, rushing attack. They, they have a lot of self-evaluation to do in Philadelphia. Uh, and I'm not saying that that's going to hurt Devontae, Adams, Devontae Smith per se, but I just think that the target usage that we're, we could see come down the pipeline if Kirk Cousins does go to uh, Atlanta would would just the target usage alone is going to surpass what we're seeing from Devontae Smith right now. And, and Kyle Pitts at tight end 10, is that still where he is? Because there's been some there's 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 been some adjustment, um, there's been some adjustment Nine. since okay. So, all right. He so just that, cracked in Joku. He just okay, but just but, cracked him. But he's still behind Evan Ingram. Yeah, Evan Ingram's eight at eighty two point two. Pitts is eighty six point eight. Joku's eighty seven zero. Should he just, should Pitts just be on the top of that, or with Evan Ingram? Because Calvin Ridley's the. Other, let's talk about Calvin Ridley and Ingram here here in a second. Okay. But do you, but. Do you like Kyle Pitts with Kirk Cousins more than Evan Ingram? If there is no Calvin Ridley, yeah, I mean he utilizes these tight ends, and like we just talked about, there's no real number two of consequence at the wide receiver position right now. Well, now again, like well, I said, Bijan is going to have a you know with Zach Robinson that's running in the awesome in the backfield, right? But we yeah. also saw Kirk in Minnesota have Diggs, Thielen, um, and and have a running back in Dalvin Cook. Like he was able to to move around with pieces like that. And he had Kyle Rudolph in there who had multiple seasons with seven, eight, nine, ten touchdowns. So I think there's opportunities for all these guys to succeed, even if they did add a lad, a Roman, a Javon Baker, whatever, to come in and be a number two in this offense. I think there's still enough room for pits. And I think nine is, you know, tight end nine, tight end eight. That's a good fine area. You know, I don't think he belongs ahead of the Kittle, Kincaid, and I don't think he belongs in that conversation at this point. Um, now, if we make it through the draft and they don't add a receiver in the first three rounds, then I think the conversation begins. Okay, maybe he should be ticked up a spot or two, maybe ahead of Evan Ingram. Well, here's the, here's the reason why I'm just I keep harping on this thing with Pitts because it feels like to me and T.J. Hawkinson here. I mean, clearly that's another guy who's going to be affected. But both those guys go off the board at a point in these drafts where it's like everything else gets super duper duper dusty. It's like there's a there's a big tier of wide receivers that I bumped up Adonai Mitchell and Xavier after doing uh, yesterday I went through with the manual cheat sheet and just did four manual drafts and the whatever the whatever the $10 I forget what yeah. it's called like the big board and in doing those I realized Xavier Worthy Adonai Mitchell they're going off the board at around the same time as these running backs like the David Montgomery's, the Ramondre Stevenson's, the Joe Mixon's. And I know it's going to be trailing data from uh, the ADP on underdog. It's not going to show you that right now, but they've moved up significantly post combine, right? The same thing has happened for Brian Thomas. And so whenever, whenever kind of after you get through that tier with it ends with those guys that also kind of above them includes the, you know, the George Pickens that people like, or, you know, Christian Kirk or Godwin, or that you feel kind of good about there's a tier break. And then you get down to guys like Romeo Dobbs and Marquise Brown, who's still, you know, uh, we don't know what's going to happen with him. Who's still a free agent, Cortland Sutton, who they said that the Broncos are going to get rid of, you know, Deontay Johnson, who I just can't, I just, yeah. don't, I mean, he limps off the, you, you, you know, I'm Deontay. good. I'm um, good. So, so good. <laughs> and the running backs that are going off the board at the same time, we're talking about James Connor and we're talking about Najee Harris or, you know, Javante Williams, Brian Robinson, just dudes, you don't, you know, you don't feel like a million bucks taking as a, you know, yeah, I don't even get excited about these guys as an RB3 when I can look down and, you know, I can get an RB3 later, like one of the rookies, like Jonathan Brooks or Trey Benson, Roshan Johnson, Kendra Miller, Zamir White, some of these kind of upside dudes, these sort of um, these these sort of moonshot to possible RB1 kind of situations if things fall right in, in free agency and through the draft. And so that's why, to me, I'm just interested in really nailing this stuff down about Kyle Pitts because he falls exactly right there. You know, yeah. if, if 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 you're not going to want to take a quarterback, if you're not going to be taking in that same kind of area, a Justin Herbert, a Jordan Love, or a Kyler Murray, which I think would be fine, it's a prime spot for tight ends as far as these early best ball drafts. So Kyle Pitts, if if we're considering the Kirk Cousins to Atlanta, becomes really interesting to me. Um, if you stay in Minnesota, are we going to get swindled by Alex? 
What like is Alexander Madison we're not going anywhere? Do anything? We're not getting swindled by anything. We're what, not what getting about, swindled. By what about Ty? Ch- we 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 always aim to never get swindled here. I don't I, I I don't mean us at Roster Watch. I mean is the um is the our fantasy players going to get swindled by believing that Ty Chandler is going to step up into some kind of awesome role for the Vikings? And they are absolutely yeah. drafting somebody, right? Or I mean, they're going to bring else. I was going to say 100% they will get swindled if they do not subscribe to Roster Watch and listen to all of our shows and listen to us uh, at the training camp tour because the training camp tour last year, if you remember right, I went up to Minnesota and I watched two practices, Minnesota and Tennessee, and my biggest takeaway from that event was, remember at that point, people were saying, Chandler's going to get to 50-50. It's going to be, it's going to be Chandler. It's going to be Chandler. And I walked in there, and it was a 90-10 split from Madison and C.J. Ham. <laughs> and Chandler wasn't touching it, right? Yeah, man. And then we saw the year start off, and they weren't giving Chandler all those opportunities that that were like people were like, what, 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 what? And then the year went on, and of course, you know, opportunity was there. Alexander Madison's gone. Ty Chandler's on a rookie contract. They're one thousand percent drafting a running back in this class. Now, this class isn't fantastic, and I shouldn't say one thousand percent. I should say maybe say I should put eighty five percent because I talked about this on on a show on Tuesday with Maddie. The depth of this free agent running back group is vast compared to this rookie running back group. Now, you just have to have the conversation with yourself. All of these running backs in the rookie class, they're going to come in in that third round area, late second, early third round area. They're all going to have $1.2 million against your cap. So what does that do to the Saquons, the Jacobses, the Henrys, the Pollards, the Swifts? Where does that cap come in for those guys? And these teams are going to have to figure that out over the next couple of days and figure out, do we want to spend $6 million at the running back position, or do we just want to bet on taking a guy in the early third or late second and getting a Jalen Wright or Trey Benson or whatever you want? The Vikings are 100% going to be in that conversation. They're either going to spend up $5, 6000000 million, or they're going to draft one in the third or fourth round. I would feel I feel so so confident in that because, like I said, they, they need – not only not only a, a guy that can take the whole workload, but they need a guy to, if they want Chandler to be the number one, they need a guy to at least be a bruiser inside the in, in, in between the tackles. Well, who are the five six million dollar guys? Do you think Austin Eckler is a five? And he doesn't really fit that profile that you said. The, we know that DeAndre Swift isn't. I yeah. don't. I mean, we know we 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 know what Saquon and what Josh Jacobs want. They want ten million. I'm not sure that they're, they're going to get it. Right? You know don't, the middle ground guy. The middle ground guy is Antonio Gibson. The middle ground guy, the two hundred twenty pounder. He's if you can get Antonio good. Gibson, get him on two, 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 two and two and a half million, two, two and a half million. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was thinking middle. Well, if we're considering middle ground, if something underneath Saquon and Josh Jacobs, what? If, I mean, Derrick Henry. But that's What's the thing is, what are you going to get? Cook got eight million last year. I think Cook, <laughs> if Cook could give us anything last year, he wouldn't have ruined it. But I think Cook kind of ruined it for these old dudes it feels like i know that it's every situation is situational but i'm not sure henry can quite get up to that eight million dollar range i would say he's probably around that five six if i had to bet today in henry and i would i mean i would pay that if i was the vikings and i knew what i had would you rather have would would, would you rather have um antonio gibson or, or jk dobbins antonio gibson six really? times a week and oh really? yeah I kind of yeah, think yeah. there's still some. I kind of think there's still something there with Dobbins, man. He's he's been I do too. That I, we just he's somebody I'm kind of interested in. You can get him as your running back five, or your you know your your running back five in best ball right now. He's going like, well, okay. So are we talking best ball? You, I thought we were talking Vikings. I thought you were talking about the Viking situation. For yeah, the no, no, we are, we are. That's but that's okay. what I'm saying. It's like it, I think that would be awesome if 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 he went somewhere yeah. like the Vikings when you can get I him agree. as your. I would agree. When you can get him as your wide, I mean, he's he's going right now. He's going right now at about the same time as like Jaleel McLaughlin. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, it's it's it, it's it's still J.K. Dobbins. It looks like we got a super chat here um, uh, here for the memes. Hi, friends. Can I ask for help with my prior quest? I didn't see a question. He did oh, have a question here. Oh, here um, but here. first off, I want to just say shout out because we just got monetized and this is the first ever. I think this is the first ever super chat, is it not? Oh, yeah, because our monetization just kicked in, man. So thanks to everybody for Shout subscribing out. here to the channel. Shout yeah, out. yeah, dude. The, can we take uh, here for the memes is like super chill. Like, I guess it's like we can't do it like they do in the store where they put up their first dollar. But maybe we can take a screenshot of that and we well, can frame I'll, it and yeah. kind of put it up on the wall. Yeah. I'll, We're going to frame you, it. Here, I'll get a screenshot of that thing. I got quick. a screenshot. Right. I just got one. All right. All right cool. Um, all right. Uh, so here's the question. What's up, guys? Just won my Dynasty League 10 man single QB. Would you trade Tyreek Hill in a 25 first for CD Lamb or Jamar Chase? I have Dak, 
Amon Ra, Garrett, Barkley, Connor, Kittle, Watson. So it's Lamb or Chase, and he's giving away Hill and a first. Hill self proclaimed came out this past year, said he's going to play two more gonna, years. Maybe he's going to play two next year. Yeah. Well, he said once this contract up, it's over, and he's going to go be an adult film star. Um, so <laughs> a 25 first, though, that's kind of. I mean, I want Jamar Chase on my team. I want CD Lamb on my team. Yeah. Um, yeah. 25 first is tough to give up plus Tyreek because you know that Tyreek's going to be awesome for you for the next two years. He's got, but he's got Barkley, Connor. The, see, the thing that's hanging me he's, up here he's is got he's Garrett got Wilson. He's, he's got, got Garrett, Garrett Wilson. Wilson. He's, he's got two good receivers and mm-hmm. Watson as well. Christian Watson's down there. I know we kind of have, we have random thoughts on him, but the problem I think I have here is Connor and Barkley at their current age. And the one thing we are very confident on in the 2025 class is that that class is going to be the most heavy at running back. Yeah. So if, you know, the, the, the question, I guess the problem you have here is you have to figure out, like, are you going all in this year? Are you trying to just build this thing as a dynasty? Do you have picks in 2025? I'm 100% in line with with Alex here on going um, Lamb or Chase, but I also just have a little bit of hesitancy, and I hope you have something planned because you will need to adjust this. Yeah, I mean, it, it, look, I'll just say this. I think that that deal is probably fair, right? I think it's fair if you want to do it. But if you do do it, I would say this year – when you can get the second round, Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, these kinds of guys in your rookie draft, you're probably going to want to do it this year and get a little bit younger at running back. You know, yep. get a, get a little younger at, at running back. Um, but we, we 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 certainly do appreciate it. Oh gosh, look at we got Blake Skaggs. Blake uh, sending us four ninety nine. The dude Blake, dude Blake is Blake is rolling in the cash now that he got a real job. <laughs> <laughs> Blake, love you, brother, man. I hope everything's going good, man. Shoot me a text. Let let me know that new that new job's going, man. Uh, we certainly appreciate we certainly appreciate it, and certainly appreciate you guys sending the the uh, super chats here in YouTube. Okay, um, let's get to uh, let's get to just a few more of these guys. Do we need to talk about Calvin Ridley and the fact was- that Trevor Lawrence says that he wants him? I don't know if it matters that Trevor Lawrence wants him back. Because if he is extended before the start, when is the start of the new league year? Is it 15th? 13th, 13th I 13th. think. 13th. If he's extended before the start of the new league year, before he officially hits free agency, then the 2024, I believe, fourth. Did there? Do you know what this is? I think it's, I think a, I think it's a second. Fourth, the fourth that they owe Atlanta becomes a second. And they're not. Yeah, there you go. You know, so I think he's going to. I think he's going to hit free agency, and if he free, his free agency is going to be able to test the market, maybe they could eventually. I don't know. They could eventually maybe do something with him. But um, any thoughts about Ridley? You know, I, I don't have the dynasty stuff pulled up right now. But he, what he's got to be thirty by he's, is he thirty yet? Let's I got him at twenty nine point five. Oh, look at this as of June so first. This I, year. I think we have him as a. Um, I think we have him as a uh, his age. Our our dynasty top age. has has this as his age thirty season. Correct. So. Um, what do you what do you think about Ridley? Any landing spots you like for him, and or any fallout for the other guys? We we mentioned Evan Ingram. Maybe we can just kind of come full circle with Kyle Pitts, like we talked about earlier. Uh, you know, how do you if we say Rid, Rid, Ridley's gone, and we're saying Kirk Cousins, Zach Robinson offense in Atlanta for Kyle Pitts? How do you and those two players are both sitting in the most dead and dusty area of these best ball drafts? Which one do you like better? I think the Ridley thing is interesting. If I, I should have dig, I should have dug into it a little bit further. But uh, if you are right in that, if he enters for agency, and then that oh, that that oh, draft yeah. pick change is a moot point, going back to Jacksonville makes a lot of sense. If the contract is right and he's happy with it, right? Especially if Trevor Lawrence wants him back. Now again, if that number is not right, if that number is close to twenty million, I'm not sure they pay that or fork that up, and you can just go into this draft class and get somebody, but. Um, a couple of spots that would make sense for Calvin Ridley, and then I would hate one would be New England. I would hate that because I don't know what the quarterback situation is. I don't know what's all around it. I would love it if they got one of these quarterbacks that could pepper him and give him 170 um, just because there's not really a ton of talent in the New England uh, wide receiver room. Another one that's interesting, I think, is Tennessee. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins is still under contract, but we know Burks is there, and we didn't really get a um, 
we didn't really get a uh, happy comment, or I should say, uh, you know, positive comments about Traylon Burks. Well, uh, you asked how to compare him to Jamar Chase. You're not going to, he said, that's unfair. <laughs> hey, I was just fishing. I was fishing to see his thoughts. And he basically said, the biggest note I took away, and that's why I fished for it, was he said, Traylon Burks still has a bit to do in the development stage. Bang. Yeah. That's the answer. That's all we needed to know. And that tells us where he thinks they need. He said they need they need speed, they need dynamism in the receiving room. Now I'm not sure Ridley brings either of those right now, but he's a really good route runner, and he might complement Hopkins pretty well. Um, I, I would I would say uh, the other, another interesting spot could be Denver if they do move on from Sutton and Judy, but we'll see oh, what yeah, happens yeah, with that. Yeah. So like that. those are just a couple of spots that kind of bring to mind. But I'm gonna be honest with you right now. I, I'm not – I haven't drafted Ridley. I think I've done six drafts this week. I haven't drafted him. He's at wide receiver 35 right now. And this is best ball talking, underdog, underdog. And he's – because he's right between McLaurin, Christian Kirk, Jackson Smith and Jigba. I'll take Jackson Smith and Jigba. In best ball, I'll take Brian Thomas. Um, you know, Jordan Addison's right in front of him, Jaden Reed, Roma Dunze. Like, I, I would rather take all these other guys that I feel better about their gameplay or I feel better about their situation than I do Ridley right now. 